lovers, and welcome to the Liberty Mike podcast, broadcasting from an undisclosed location in the heart of Dixie. I am Michael, and I'm here with Liberty Larry. How's it going? Doing okay. Yeah. It's been a it's been a weird week. Dude, you're telling me, man. <laughs> I spent most of it in bed, honestly. <laughs> the surgery did not... It went fine. Yeah. As yeah. far as it goes. <laughs> um, as far as have, everything went like it was supposed to, right? Yeah, I, but I have not had fun the last couple of days. Yeah. Um, I, so. I anticipate. I figure most people say that after surgery. That's probably true. I, the, um, the last time it was a different procedure, but the last time it, this went like really easy. I, like I was ready to go the next day. I was fine. Yeah. Um, not this time. Yeah. You're a little older this time. Though. Yeah, three months. Still, still <laughs> older though. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> that, that different is, procedure. That's yeah. really the thing. This was more invasive. Ah, uh, okay. So keep keep telling yourself that. Has nothing to do with my age. I'm young at heart. Yeah, there you go. And in the face. And if the, my hair wasn't gray, like nobody would think I was as old as I am. Well, I was going to say, your hair has been gray like that for a long time. <laughs> yes. So. It started going when I was like 16. Yeah. Um, I had a full head of gray by the time I was 30. Yeah. It's crazy. Mm-hmm. Makes me look distinguished. And wise. Go. Wise. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> like the old silverback gorilla. Oh, yeah. Dominating too, you know. Mm. Alpha yeah. male. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, uh, do you have anything? Um, <laughs> With that exciting intro. More or less serious to discuss before we really dive into uh, things. Let's get into it, man. All right. Because we can, we can maybe keep this kind of a short one. Because we're yeah. starting really late and I'm hungry. And it is like we are off to a late start. Just so. Yeah. And I don't know yeah. that I feel like sitting that long really anyway. I never feel like sitting that long. So. But I always power through it. The sitting. Well yeah. done. I, I do. I do. The, I do what I can. I am impressed. <laughs> um, okay, so we may as well talk about this Trump stuff again. Drive yeah. away half our audience right at the beginning. <laughs> um, oh, what did Trump do as, now? As we're not, you know, appropriately uh, disgusted by him or whatever. No. Um, of course, if we go the other way, then we're not um, uh, appropriately cheerleading for him. So there's no winning with this guy. <laughs> right. um, it's all or nothing. But they they had the uh, the court case that about his financial fraud, quote unquote. Yeah. Um, that ended with, as far as I can tell, all told, fines and interest and everything else that they're charging um, is going to cost Trump roughly $450 million. Oh, is it that much? Yeah. I thought I've, it was the lower or the mid 300s. Yeah. There, no, it is like mid 300s. Um, was the was judgment? Just the judgment. Yeah. Okay. But yeah. judgment plus fines plus interest. Gotcha. Comes up to a little over So I saw million, something I the other day. I want to say he's only got like Five hundred million, something liquid. Yeah, well, I mean, four hundred and fifty million dollars is a lot of assets to have liquid for anybody, even yeah, somebody even with him, a, yeah, a, you know. Um, so well, I guess at least he can pay it. I kind of figured he'd have to sell some stuff. Yeah, well, he may have to start at some point though, especially to keep his campaign to going. Yeah. Um. The the there's a <laughs> few interesting things here on this. One of them is that he has to pay that amount in full. In order to appeal. Oh, really? See, I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. I just figured this would be kicked down the curb through appeals at least through the next year. Yeah, that's it's ridiculous to have to do that. Like, I think you made a judgment in error. Well, you have to pay us before you, we can decide that. So if they so so now here's an interesting question. So let's mm -hmm. say that he does pay that, and then it does get turned over in appeal. Um, what, what if the government can't come up with the money to give it back to him? They'll just print it. Well, I know they will, but <laughs> but this is uh, yeah, but this is a state. This oh, is or, a state or, or is it state or city? No, it's a, it's a it's a state government. Is it state government? Yeah. So they can't print money. That's true. And they do run out of it. Um, the state of Alabama. It's been years ago now, but mm. the, people were really late getting their income tax refunds back. Yeah, I remember because that. they didn't. State just didn't have it. Well. I mean, you would hope there would be some rule. I don't know for sure. You would hope no. there would be some rules or something that they have to put it in escrow or something to hold. You would think so. Well, it was under appeal, but I, I mean, I that's don't know. even for a state. That's a pretty big windfall for a state. Yeah, it is. I mean, I mean, I know you're talking about states run big budgets and big numbers, but that's that's a windfall, man. Yeah, and it's essentially stolen. 
because the <laughs> because if you look at the like the the basis of this case, it's garbage. Like, well, there's no victim. It's a it's a class act. Wait, what was what, what? Not class action. What's no, the word no, I'm no. looking for? Um, it, the government brought the case because it didn't like the terms in a satisfied contract between private parties. That's yeah. Ex- I mean, that's, there's, there's a that's statute what I'm getting that at, they're yeah. using, but the, yeah. the statute, as far as I understand it, has never been used um, outside of a criminal case or in the case of bankruptcy or where there were financial victims, but there is no victim here. There's obviously. no victim, yeah. Um, and in fact, the bank that gave the loan, the loan giver, yeah. Um, so that they were very happy with the arrangement and would be happy to, uh, to have it. more arrangements with Donald Trump, which they now can't do because the state has decided this. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's, <coughs> that's, that's probably the first place to start with taking this apart. Like what are the real problems with this? Um, and it's how I described what happened is that the state decided that, a, a contract arrangement between two private parties the state wasn't satisfied with and therefore went after one of the parties. Yeah. The state should have nothing to do with a contract between two private parties except for ensuring that it's satisfied. Yeah, unless one of the parties decides that something was unfair. And that would be a reasonable place for somebody, for the state to step in and be like, all right, well, we need to at least take a look and blah, 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 blah. Right. But if both parties are satisfied, there's no reason... Mm-hmm. I, there's, it just doesn't make sense. <laughs> you hear my cat making that weird noise behind you. He's agreeing with me. <laughs> I, you're probably right. <laughs> he knows stuff. That's yeah. a smart one. Oh, is it? Okay. <laughs> I didn't know which one it was. I assumed she. <laughs> no, no. no. He, it's the boy. It's BC. Oh, okay. Um, he doesn't usually make a lot of noise during the podcast. Uh, but tonight is different because he's a Trump fan, I guess. Apparently. Right. And a black man. <laughs> well, I, I hear there's more and more of those. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, um, yeah, the the uh, the problem also is that the the state's um, claims of the values of the property is just as arbitrary as the ones that were submitted by Trump, as far as I can tell. Yeah. Um, the, well, and something else bank I saw certainly had somebody. Well, uh, that's what. So that's where I was going. The, um, or the, it would at least be on them to have it evaluated yeah. because my understanding was all the documents that he turned over that were supposedly like book or what, um, forged or whatever are mm-hmm. not true. All said on them to check this for yourself. Yeah. Like, I mean, that was, that was disclaimed on all of them that, that these are all estimates that we, these are not exact quotes like. Check, mm-hmm. check, check this, you know. Yeah, check. it's up to the bank to decide and the, what the, the value bank has of the collateral the, is. Yeah, I mean, and the bank has the resources to do that. It's not absolutely. like they're not able to do that. Yeah, try and refinance your mortgage sometime. Uh, I was, See I was if you don't have some say, yeah. assessor out there real quickly. Oh, yeah, nitpicking everything. Yeah. So, um, But like I said, going back to the real problem is the idea that the government can step in between an agreement between two private parties Especially one that has already been satisfied yeah, and hold one of them <coughs> liable for some kind of damages that the other isn't claiming. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's, so, and yeah. it's not like so that money's going, money going to the going? bank. Yeah. The money's going to the state. <laughs> yeah. Right. So, um, of course that's generally the case in our legal system. The only person that, the only people that win are the attorneys and the government. Yeah, exactly. No matter what kind of case it is really. Yeah. yeah. Um, so <sighs> Anyway, this is, it, it seems to me that the size of the judgment is really clearly going after Trump himself. And um, now Trump said, and there's good reason to believe, and some investors have, have echoed this, um, that New York investors, particularly real estate investors, like this is scary to them. Yeah. Because everybody does this. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, first well, because off, because, because it's on the the onerous is on the bank to verify these documents. Mm-hmm. Like these these aren't like engraved in stone like things. Like it's on the bank to verify that these claims are correct. Yeah. Um, the interesting part about that with Trump saying that that this is going to give investors cold feet in New York, um, and some other investors, like I said, echoing that uh, idea uh, that hey, why would I buy property in New York now? Yeah. 
I mean, who when knows? When the state can hold me liable for something that it thinks is wrong, even though nobody else feels that there were any damages yeah. years down the road, because this is old stuff, too. <laughs> and uh, Governor Kathy Hochul um, yeah. said that the other investors have nothing to worry about. Because their name isn't Donald Trump. Exactly. Like right? that, I mean, there's no that, other way to interpret that. Yeah, I mean, that's exactly uh, what it is. Like, this is clearly going after the man. Mm-hmm. But the truth is that they do have something to worry about if they get on the wrong side of the state. Well, and that's just it. If your politics are not what they should, what the state mm-hmm. thinks they should be, yeah, you've got something to worry about. This yeah. can now be used as a tool to go after you. Yeah. Um, and it just adds And it doesn't the, even have to be anything political. I mean, it could be for any reason. Sure. Absolutely. You, know? you, you upset the DA. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you hit on his wife at a party or something. Like, who yeah, knows? Exactly. Yeah. Um, and this just goes, this is added on to the $83 million, um, to E. Jean Carroll, who I have a book of hers on my, uh, in my bookshelves, actually. Yeah. You said it's um, pretty good, right? Uh, I didn't read it. Oh, you hadn't read it? No, I haven't read it. It's, um, it's a biography of Hunter Thompson, though. I don't oh, know why I haven't so, read it. So, yeah, when, I, that's, that's the reason biographies. I assumed it was good was because the word Hunter Thompson was in it. I was like, oh, well, yeah. it must be great then. Yeah, I, I mean, probably. Yeah, <laughs> you maybe. You can't go wrong with a biography <laughs> of that guy, I don't think. Yeah, well, um, she, I have read, she, she could be the first. Yeah, I have read a biography of his, which I really enjoyed, um, or of him yeah. that I really enjoyed. Hers is another one that somebody gave me when I was living in Atlanta. Yeah. I can't remember who actually, I think it was a roommate at the time, but doesn't yeah. matter. Um, I haven't, I haven't actually read that. So I don't know Okay, if it's good. You just kind of have to assume it is because it's a biography. Of Hunter Thompson. <laughs> I mean, unless she's just a horrible writer, right? yeah, she, <laughs> which could probably, be. she's not probably. I yeah. mean, she seems creative. Okay. Well, that, <laughs> this is true. This is very true. <laughs> um, I don't know what happened obviously. And there's no evidence of anything anywhere. Um, well, that, and that's it, real, the, what the real problem is, is there's no evidence of this. And this, this came out. When did this come out? When he st- first started running for president? I don't think so. I think it was later. Was it later? Yeah. I, th- I think it was actually, I think it was for the 2020 election, not for the okay. 2016 election, but I don't remember now. Um, anyway, you have to be skeptical of these type of things. Yeah. He was found liable in a civil case. Yeah. Um, not a criminal case. I'm, yeah. To yeah, make very, that really clear. Very important, yeah. Um, not very in a big. criminal case, but he was found liable in a civil case for uh, sexual abuse um, without yeah. evidence. Except yeah. for her word, essentially, as far as I can tell. Yeah. Uh, Were you, they? Are, are you aware of any? I mean, there's no, <coughs> there's no like security footage. There's no oh, other as far, witnesses. My, my, there's no my anything, understanding right? of it was was it was all completely. This was her word versus his. Okay. Um, yeah, that's that, what I thought. I mean, that was my understanding. I mean, that's my understanding too. I'm, but I leave it open if I'm wrong. Michael at the Liberty Send me info. Yeah, I don't think so though. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um. At any rate, uh, then he said that she was a liar and kept saying that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> As you would expect Donald Trump to do. Yeah. Um, and so now he's been, uh, he's had a judgment against him for defamation of character, mm-hmm. which this is, I mean, okay. So I guess you have the civil case to stand up so that he can't claim defamation of character f- against her yeah. for calling him a rapist. Yeah. Yeah. Without evidence. All right. Um, so he calls her a liar. Also without evidence, as far as I can tell. I yeah, mean, all of this seems to be, yeah. Um, but he's he's held liable for defamation of character, and an $83 million judgment is insane on a defamation of character case. Yeah, yeah. Insane. Yeah. Um, I mean, she can't show there's, that she I was has that kind of There's loss. no way she can show those type of losses. Yeah. There's no way. Um. So again, it was just it was purely punitive. Yeah, uh, and I believe the I believe it was the judge that said that they picked a number that they thought would be enough to deter him from continuing. <laughs> they don't know that man at all. <laughs> exactly. Right. <laughs> That's all nothing, I got to say about that. Him. You, you, you yeah. can hold judgments against him until he's bankrupt. It doesn't matter. Yeah, exactly. Um, He'll be out on the street with a sign. I'm telling you right now. <laughs> that like that, that is who he is. That's a hilarious picture in my head. Uh, <laughs> it's who he is. <laughs> Trump and rags on the corner in New York City holding a sign that says, she's a liar. She's a liar. <laughs> <laughs> Lock her up. Like whatever it is. Like, <laughs> oh, hilarious. Oh. Um, 
So uh, this seems to be the new plan, though, is to bankrupt him. Or, I mean, obviously this takes away from his campaign, too. Yeah. He's having to spend all this time in court instead of out on the campaign trail. It doesn't oh, yeah. seem to be mattering that much, honestly. But Well, no, um, because, and this has been an ongoing theme um, since the beginning of this presidential run is his poll numbers have gotten steadily better and better the more they've put him in court and attacked him this way. Um, and I, I just don't see that changing. The, well, that's true. I, I thought you were going to go at it in a different way. And yeah. I was going to say um, that it, this is a, this is kind of how it's been since the beginning of his presidency. Yeah. Um, when the whole Russiagate hoax was launched to keep him from doing anything. Yeah. Uh, that's true too. Like I say, I mean, if that this, it just kind of seems to be the way this plays out. And you would think that the powers that be would recognize that on some kind of level. Mm-hmm. Like the more we attack or try to do something to this guy, the more powerful he gets. The more tight, the more you tighten your grip, Tarkin, the more star systems will slip through your fingers. That's the that that is a, yeah. a very wise to, to quote Star Wars again. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Get, get my nerdy stuff out. Yeah. Um, I hate Star Trek, by the way. You can email me about that, too. <laughs> Fair enough. Love Star Wars, hate Star Trek. Yeah. So you're Just, one of those. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, I don't love Star Wars anymore. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> I, I love the old Star Wars. Yeah. Um, original the, trilogy, and that's it. <laughs> original trilogy. Uh, there's been some good stuff since then, but. Few and far between. Not a lot. Yeah. <laughs> not a lot. Andor was surprisingly good. That's the only thing that's been even decent and. Yeah. decade or more I think yeah. um, and there was a bunch <laughs> of characters that you didn't know anything about I, well I would oh, say Rogue One okay who yeah. one of the characters is the main character in Andor okay that was also decent yeah. although it was a like the last scene so here I'm nerding out again alright um, here we go last scene is a complete rip off from uh, this movie called These Final Hours which is currently available for free on Tubi okay at least in the US yeah. I highly recommend it to anybody. It's a end of the world um, movie, but it's uh, it deals with some interesting nuance about the behaviors of humans when they know they have a deadline. When the clock's on, yeah, yeah. Uh, like their life has a deadline. Like there's a literal deadline. <laughs> um, <clears throat> and uh, it's a it's a very good film. Yeah. And the end scene you'll see and you'll say, oh, that's the scene from Rogue One. But no, you have it backwards. <laughs> they they copied that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Rogue One copied that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyway. Okay. Well, we can move on from the, the Trump stuff. It's it's a well, sideshow, really. The, mostly what I is. wanted to talk about is the use of the legal system to punish people that the state doesn't like. And particularly the aspect with this new case of the state stepping into private contracts and making decisions about how somebody should be upset when they're not. Well, to our friends on the left, I'll caution you this, because all the ones that are cheering this on and are all for this right now, just remember the same thing that you're doing right now, this will be used against you in the future. Um, this is, uh, as far as politics goes, it's the tell that's o- old as time. Mm-hmm. Like, whatever you do to your opponent, your opponent will do to you later. Yeah, Thomas Massey, and I actually have this clip somewhere. I'd have to dig it up, so I'm not going to. I'm just going to try and quote him as best All I right. can. Yeah. Um, said not that long ago that you never give government a power that you wouldn't give to your worst enemy because yep. chances are your worst enemy will have it at some point. Exactly. And all of this is a Pandora's box that we just... It's not something that's... It's just not a path we've went down in the U.S. Like, oh, the cat's out of the bag now. Yeah, right? <laughs> well, that's just it. Like, this is stuff that they do in, you know, other countries, like like locking up political people and, and mm-hmm. that type of thing. It's just, it's right or wrong. It's not something that we've ever done here. Because you're not going to sit here and tell me that Bill Clinton and Bush and Obama and all of these people are just like these saints that's never done anything wrong we all know that's not true (laughs) every single one of them could be prosecuted for war crimes well yeah easily yeah Mm -hmm. so i mean to to do this to trump is just it's trump included by the way oh yeah yeah (laughs) exactly which is the reason that they can't attack carving out any space for him on yeah and that's the reason they won't attack him on those type of things though Mm -hmm. is because that's stuff that that clearly the other presidents are just as guilty of and and it's not even 
dropped a, a bomb from a drone on a U.S. citizen in a foreign country. Yeah. Without due process. <laughs> without due process, yeah. Who so. was not engaged in violence. <laughs> yeah. I, so. like, I want to make that clear, too. So, like, okay, yeah. if the guy's, like, shooting American soldiers and they end well, up yeah. shooting him, that's one thing. Yeah. But this is a guy who was just speaking out. Mm-hmm. And I'm not, yeah. you know, I'm talking about on, uh, Anwar al Alaki. Yeah. That's a rough one. Anwar, <laughs> Anwar al Alaki. Yeah. Now, I'm not... I'm not a fan of what he had to say. No. But, like, he was an American citizen, and they didn't like what he had to say, so they dropped a bomb on him. Yeah. Like, that's that's a dangerous precedent to set. You are guaranteed due process of law in this country. Yeah. Yeah. He's an American citizen. Obama didn't care. Yeah. Like, that's a terrible crime. Like, a far worse crime, in my opinion. Oh, yeah. But he'll never be held accountable. And I was, we may as well transition to the other thing and, or to the next thing, I guess, not the other thing. Um, as long as we're talking about locking up political opponents. Uh, so, um, Navalny Mm. just died. Well, maybe just died in a Russian prison. There's not, (laughs) there's no proof of that at this point, I guess. Um, at will least there, as of yesterday. Will there ever be? I mean, who knows? I, that's part of the problem, right? Yeah. Is that some of this, you know, the information is so locked down. I suspect that there will be proof at some point. Yeah. If he's dead. Yeah. Do you think that there will be any proof of how he died? No. I didn't think so. No, no. Yeah. Um. It's, uh, it's an interesting case. Uh, you can say... I mean, I was talking, um, I was talking with the doc recently and, uh, there was a argument about Putin, you know, killing everybody that was in opposition to him and that, you know, anybody who runs a country where they have no opposition media, like anybody that speaks out gets killed or, or imprisoned, et cetera. Like, what about this country? What about Assange? And then yeah, I go... I often go into just the uh, the um, whistleblowers because I think that's a better example in this country. Yeah. The people that spoke out against the, the <laughs> crimes of the U.S. government where the criminals weren't punished, but the person who exposed the crimes was. Um, so you have, of course, uh, Assange's uh, source on the um, uh, the war logs whose name is escaping me right now um, because it changed. <laughs> oh, um, ah, Chelsea Manning? Manning, right. Okay, yeah. so you got Manning. Um, you have John Kiriakou, who served time for exposing the uh, CIA torture program, Yeah. but none of the torturers served time. Um, you've got Daniel Hale. Daniel Hale? I always get the name mixed. It's Hale is the last name, definitely. Yeah. I was getting mixed up with the um, Revolutionary War guy who said, uh, you know, give me liberty or give me oh, death. Yeah. So I may have the first name wrong. But um, uh, Hale exposed uh, the uh, the crimes of the U.S. drone war. Yeah. None of the people making those decisions went to jail, but he's in jail now. Right. Um. <laughs> We have a long history of imprisoning people who speak out against the government in this country. So yeah. now it may not be at the same level, yeah. but it's a matter of degree, not a kind. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, <coughs> so there I am blaming America first, right? <laughs> uh, well, it's because we want them to do better. Well, and with this Navalny thing, and I, I hate to sound just like really jaded about all of this, but it was really convenient timing. Yeah. Okay. So it was really convenient timing to coincide with his wife, Yulia, um, Navalnaya, because <laughs> yeah. Russia's a uh, country where your last name changes based on whether you're masculine or feminine, male or female. Oh, really? Isn't that fun? Yeah. So he's Navalny. Yeah. His wife is Navalnaya. Oh, Okay. Interesting. This I like it. Fun. I like it. Um, anyway, it shows that she belongs to him. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, <laughs> kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. That's not at all true. It's just uh, quirk of the language. But 
Um, anyway, uh, his wife uh, was in Berlin for the annual security conference. Yeah. She gave a big speech. Um, she didn't seem like the grieving widow. She was holding it together. She Absolutely. Was, she was, and she, uh, essentially announced her, um, that she's going to step into politics in his place. Oh yeah. In Russia. Yes. Well, well in Russian politics, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, you would kind of hope that she had enough sense not to go right into Russia right now. <laughs> you would think so. <laughs> Like I said, I'm not defending the Russian government in this case. I'm, no, but let's not be stupid, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that exactly. So let's not be stupid. Yeah. Um. Now, this is another one of those like uh, qui bono, who benefits uh, kind of situations. Like, there's no sense, no sense yeah. whatsoever in Putin killing this guy right now. You don't think so? No, because Navalny's yesterday's news. Well, the, he's, he so, is he is a. He is irrelevant in Russia right now. So the coverage I've seen, and like I say, I'm not deep into this, but, but the idea is is that he was sending a message by doing this um, on the heels of that summit, just kind of rubbing it in the faces of of those countries that look like I can do this and I can get away with it. Um, because I, I guess he's no longer – what summit was – was that I forget what the I assume was. you're talking about the Berlin Security Conference. Yeah, the, yeah, the Security Conference thing. Yeah, mm. is that that's the one that I, I assume that yeah. must be. I mean, that's what's because, going on right now because he was he because was, he was uninvited. He was uninvited to yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. No, he's it, the interesting thing is that it was at the Berlin Security Conference years ago. I guess, it wasn't the first time that he brought it up, but where um, Putin gave a long speech about NATO encroachment. Okay. Yeah. And that this was a dangerous game to play. Yeah. Um, and that at some point Russia would have to react to it. Yeah. So, I mean, it, I don't know. There, there's definitely a case to be made that he could have done this with that timing just to like rub it in their face, you know? Yeah. I mean, I guess it could be, I, I read a, um, an interesting article by Gilbert Doctorow who, um, uh, is, he covers, um, Brussels, the yeah. EU primarily. Yeah. But he um, spent some time in Russia, speaks the language, follows the news there also. Um, yeah. Pretty insightful a lot of times. There are moments where I feel like he goes a little too far. This might be one of them, actually. Yeah. Um, but he did write a really interesting article about the, uh, blaming the UK for this really? assassination and others. Yeah. yeah. Um, He's, he's like, it, it's really convenient that at times when um, Russian President Vladimir Putin's uh, rivals die at the worst possible time, it keeps happening in the UK. Oh, yeah. This isn't yeah. the case right now, but um, <coughs> he uh, identified uh, Alexander Litovinko in 2006, died in the UK, um, Boris Berezovsky, uh, died in 2013 in the UK. Um, there were rumors at that time that he was uh, seeking forgiveness in Russia and trying to go back to Russia with a whole bunch of documents from the UK. Yeah. Um, died conveniently. Of course, the one, that, like we talked about it on the podcast, uh, was Alexander Skripal. Oh, no, I guess, no, we probably talked about it, but it, it wasn't during the time of the podcast. I think it came back up later. It was the Alexander Skripal... Um, Novichok death in uh, Salisbury in the UK in 2018. I do remember that, yeah. Um, maybe I'm remembering it just because I remember reading about it, not because we talked about it on the podcast. I feel but like I feel we, like we about did it. bring it up at some point. I do, yeah. Um, anyway, uh, it was about a month ahead of the Russian, no, not even, just a couple of weeks ahead of the Russian elections, yeah. which were March of 2018. Um, there's Russian elections uh, where um, Putin has to to stand for re-election in March of this year. So just a month from now. Yeah. So that's another bit of convenient timing yeah. um, to, you know, bring focus back on this. And then of course there's the, the uh, Tucker Carlson interview, which was a win for Putin in a lot of ways. Like he sat there for an hour, two, two and a half, um, two hours and 15 <laughs> minutes, actually um, boring for probably the first, half hour, 45 minutes for people that didn't 
care yeah. about Russian history. And sure, there were plenty of things. There was some revisionist history going on there. Like, yeah, certainly. Um, he he's he has an agenda, <laughs> right? <laughs> right. Uh, newsflash here. Yeah. First time said on the podcast, of course. Politicians lie. <laughs> yeah, occasionally. Right. <laughs> they don't um, make a habit of it, though, right? <laughs> no, no, no. It's few and far between. Yeah, that, that makes um, me feel better. But uh, he sat down there, coming off as the reasonable one. Yeah. I mean, like that. That really was well, a hey, win for him. I'm in just a lot of ways. saying. Like, I mean, you look at that interview with Putin and how sh- clearly sharp he is. Versus if you had that type of interview with um, with Biden. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Imagine I mean, a two hour and 15 minutes. Come on. Do you think Biden. he could get through it? There's no way. Just ask him to tell you as much as he remembers about American history. He lived through <laughs> half of it and still. Yeah, he'd still yeah. get it wrong and fumble through it. There's no way you could get through that. So I'm just saying. And I'll be honest, Biden probably could tell you more about American history than Trump. That may be true. Well, I mean, well, Biden, <laughs> Biden in his prime could probably tell you more about. That. Definitely in his prime, he could. Yeah, he, I think he probably still could. You think so? I don't know, man. I don't. I just don't think that Trump he, knows he, that much. I don't think Trump knows that much either. But Biden can barely string words together, man. <laughs> yeah. Like, I mean, it's I mean, getting it's getting him, bad. You give him the first fifteen minutes, he could probably okay. tell you more in the first fifteen minutes than Trump could tell you in a two and a half hour interview. That that may be true. <laughs> I don't know. Now, though, what but, he said after that first fifteen minutes may completely which, fall apart. Well, I was going to say which one would be more entertaining when right? we landed on. On Mars in 1969, and <laughs> yeah. yeah, who knows? Yeah. Um, but uh, the the Skripal incident particularly um, seems relevant because of the Novichok connection. Yeah, right. It's it's the same poison that was supposedly used against Navalny. Uh, gosh, when was that? 2020. Maybe I've heard as many 20, times as I've heard it brought up. I can't remember now. We definitely talked about that on the oh, podcast. Oh, we did. Yeah. 2022, yeah. maybe. I don't remember now. Um, the year I probably should have written that down. Cause you know, I'm terrible with names and, and dates. Dates. Yeah. So, oh, well, yeah. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, it, it happened in Salisbury. Like nobody mentions, um, that Salisbury, uh, there's a chemical weapons plant, a UK chemical weapons plant, just like miles from Salisbury. Oh yeah. Yeah. Nobody talks about that. That produces Novichok. So, so this stuff's accessible though. Yeah. So it, it absolutely could have been the UK government. And there were a lot of arguments made at the time that it most likely was. Yeah. Um, but, uh, the screw paws disappeared, um, without a trace. As far as I can tell, they haven't, they haven't reappeared. Um, Navalny survived an attack with Novichok. Like, this is an incredibly deadly drug. Like, I definitely remember talking about that when the Navalny thing came up the first time. Yeah. Um, This is a really, really (coughs) deadly poison. People don't survive this. Yeah. So, the fact that Navalny survived it, landed in Germany, spent months making a movie with some falsified information about um, properties that Putin supposedly owned... Yeah. which I, I think have been proven that he doesn't. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm sure there are people out there that make the case, well, he's just hidden it. Well, it's under somebody else's name, but he's really the... Whatever. <laughs> okay, maybe. I mean... He, he runs the country. Like, yeah. come on, guys. Hell like, if I know. I mean... I, yeah. But we're, we're making some leaps now, yeah. right? Um, anyway... Um, he went back, he got arrested. I don't know how reasonable the arrest was. Yeah. He might have died in prison, but it doesn't benefit uh, Putin in any way. Yeah. Um, but it does benefit the West more. Yeah. I mean, it might benefit Putin to just a, like a screw you to the... I mean, that's the the that's Munich. the narrative I've heard is, is just not that it benefits him like in any like tangible way other than just kind of like a middle thing. saying Berlin. I think it's Munich actually. Oh, it is Security Munich. conference. Yeah, Munich security conference. Yeah. I knew right. I had heard it's called something other than what you were calling it. Yeah. But yeah, I, could, no, I didn't no, know I, what it was I, I've though. I've been saying Berlin, but it's, yeah, it's Munich. Sorry, yeah. my mistake. No, um, all good, but yeah, I mean, other than that, I just, just named big city in Germany, you know. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, other other than that, just kind of being a middle finger. Like I don't, I haven't really yeah. heard it. Like I mean, there's nothing tangible he gets from this. It's not like this guy was going to beat him in an election or something. Mm-hmm. 
Um, and so, but it does benefit the West more because uh, it um, gives us a narrative. Well, it it kind of counters the like reasonable guy narrative that may have originated with the Tucker Carlson interview. Yeah. Um, it says, "Remember how terrible this guy is." Yeah. Um, and it's reminder of how terrible this guy is to people in Russia quickly before the election mm-hmm. in yeah. a month. Also, I don't think it'll <laughs> matter much. He's got like an eighty something percent approval rating in Russia. I was gonna like, say, who's running the wildly team? popular? Anybody? I'm sure. Uh, yeah. But he's wildly popular in Russia. Yeah. Um, and they don't, th- but that's the other thing. Like in Russia, Navalny doesn't matter anymore. Like his yeah. accusations of corruptions are, are just not important to Russians who feel like the West is threatening their existence Yeah, right now, which yeah. is the narrative in Russia, Yeah, which is that, you know, the NATO is trying to capture more and more territory so that they can destroy us. Yeah. And it, it's not an unreasonable yeah, um, and, and you've got to, you've got to remember this is coming from a country and a people who have a memory of this type of thing happening before. Right. Like I mean, it's not like this is like like us being worried about the the Mexicans taking over the country or something. Like like this is this is something that's happened to them before, and it's within you know recent not recent but mm-hmm. like politically speaking, relatively recent. This is kind of a side note, but the thing that really gets me is the, like the comparisons is like, Oh, you know, and Putin liked, uh, Hitler so much and blah, 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 man. No, the Russians yeah. have a very strong memory of Nazi aggression. Yeah. They lost 27 they, million people in world war two, 27 say. million people That's insane. fighting the Nazis in world war two. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, like so you hear that's, him talking. That's not that, a model they're trying to follow. No, right? no. <laughs> you, you hear him talking about um, how they want to denazify Ukraine. Like yeah. that's probably the same kind of uh, rallying cry that the Crusades used about you know the to protect Christianity in the Middle East, and that's why we've got to go fight. Like it might. I mean, it's yeah. it's probably a ploy in the same way that we used human rights when we go into places. Yeah, that's you know? our ploy. Yeah, um, but. There is a real strong memory and uh, a, a, a good reason for it of um, yeah. of a a hatred of Nazis <laughs> yeah. in Russia. Right. Uh, so, anyway, um, uh, I don't know what's going to come out of this. I'll be interested to see how this plays. I find it really frustrating that um, that Biden and so many people in the government say keep going out there and saying that Putin killed Navalny when we don't actually have any evidence that Navalny's dead. Right. Like there's no information out there. There's no reason to be making these claims <laughs> and, I and just these antagonistic say, statements. It you know from some of the other politicians I can kind of take it, but that coming from the president of the United States, that just feels like it should have some weight to it. Mm-hmm. And and it, I mean, it doesn't because maybe it's just because it's coming from Biden, but it has weight to it in a lot of places. Maybe not in this room, but it does. Yeah. Well, but that's, but that's kind of what I'm getting at though, is the, how dangerous of a statement that really is. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't think that it's taken as seriously. I, uh, maybe it is. Well, the fact that it is taken seriously in places is the dangerous part of that. Well, here's because the we thing have that- to remember like, like Russia is like a nuclear armed country. Yeah. Like, I mean this, and we've been doing this, even the whole idea of arming, openly arming Ukraine against Russia, Mm -hmm. like that's dangerous stuff. And it's, it's like, there's at least if you listen to the mainstream media, there's no reckon, reckon, recognition of that. Yeah. It's like, they don't even care. Here's the thing that bothers me the most about it actually, is that now the government is all out there with the narrative about Putin killing Navalny, an opposition leader in his own country. Yeah. Why is not our government out there saying um, that uh, Zelensky killed Gonzalo Lira, an American journalist that spoke out against the Ukrainian regime? Yeah. Yeah. It's the same thing that happened. And Gonzalo (laughs) Lira was an American citizen. Right. Nobody cares about him Mm -mm. because he's on the wrong side. Exactly. 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 That's the frustrating thing about it to me. Yeah. Um, like, I mean, I don't know about Navalny. I, I don't think that he was ever that uh, influential within Russia. Yeah. Um, he was a guy that the West could kind of hang on. Yeah. Um, 
And Gonzalo Lira obviously was never very influential either, but Gonzalo Lira at least was an American citizen. Yeah. Uh, in the captivity of a supposed ally. Right. And he died in prison just the same. Yeah. Presumably, assuming that Navalny actually is dead. Yeah. And the American government doesn't care about him, Mm -mm. but they care about the Russian opposition leader. Yeah. Leaders, quote unquote. That's the part that really frustrates me, is that we got our, we got our priorities all wrong here. Oh, yeah. Like, and I, I would like to say that that would be different under somebody like Trump, but I don't think it would. I don't think it would. I mean, it, it I mean, would. I would like to say that just because he's out there, America first, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. But I don't think he knows who any of these people are either. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> Unfortunately. Yeah. Um, and I don't think that there would have been any more effort under a Trump administration to get Gonzalo Lira out of Ukraine beforehand. No. So. Um, the... And I guess this is the last thing that I want to talk about a little bit is that the, well, actually, I guess we can lead into it with more Trump stuff. Um, Trump got a lot of heat for some NATO criticism. Oh yeah. Um, saying that, uh, you know, everybody needs to pay their fair share and that if they weren't paying that he would say, Russia, do whatever you need to <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> That's stupid. I mean, he's, he's stupid he's, sometimes. Uh, like he just, yeah. Oh my God. Well, um, he intentionally says things to light people on fire, like to get well, people maybe. fired up. <laughs> like, I really do believe that. Like, I like, think that that's the most likely explanation, but it could just be that he just doesn't care. Yeah, he's just a troll. I, yeah. I mean, well, I well, guess that's that, your that, argument, right? But that I, is I my think argument. That he, just, is, he is just a troll. He's just he's, trying to. Sometimes I think he's just an idiot. Well, there's there's that too. <laughs> like, I mean, that's that's clear I mean, like, and that obvious. That's a really stupid thing to say. I mean that. But some things that you have to remember about this is like, well, first off, Jens Stoltenberg, um, who's the head of NATO, yeah, agreed that <laughs> there are some countries in there that need to pay their fair share, like they have agreed to as part of the contract. Yeah, um, this is part of the agreement. You're supposed to pay two percent. You're not doing it. He agrees. Yeah. Um, that didn't justify the other statement from Trump, but still. <laughs> I'm going to sick Russia on you if you yeah, don't. <laughs> that's so stupid. Um, oh, that that creates this whole weird, like, dynamic that, <laughs> like, if you don't pay your fair share, you know, I'll call Russia. I got the red phone. Like, yeah. <laughs> But the only reason that it matters is because somebody in the U.S. said it. Like, if somebody yeah. in, um, I don't know, Macedonia yeah. made some statement like this, nobody would care because Macedonia... Like they're part of NATO, but they don't matter. They don't have any influence over. Yeah, they whatsoever. don't matter at all. If they pulled out of NATO, nobody would care. It wouldn't matter one bit. Right. Um. And and that's the thing. There's only about five members of NATO who's that matter. That matter at all. That actually have any input at all because yeah. they actually spend money and have some kind of defense. And everybody else in NATO is just using those five countries. Yeah. I mean, roughly speaking, it would be the U.S., U.K., France, Germany. Well, that's only four. That's four, yeah. <laughs> uh, there's probably another one. I'm sure there's got to be, right? <laughs> um, Give me a picture of a map. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Trying, like yeah. Spain, Italy, I don't know. Yeah. Right? Greece, no. No, yeah. um, All these Eastern European nations that have been adding it, and they don't matter. Yeah. Um, they're only there to be a, a, a trip line. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, whatever. Anyway, point is, that there, that everybody else except for those four or some fifth nation that we can't come up with, <laughs> yeah, um, is really Turkey, maybe. Oh, maybe Turkey. Turkey, maybe. I, yeah, I bet Turkey's got their own legitimate defense. Uh, yeah, Turkey. Turkey. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. right. <laughs> Gotta say it right now. Yeah, I have some maps with the T U R K I Y E already, uh, just because that's an older. Say pronunciation. Yeah. yeah. So I, I'm okay with that coming back. I actually kind of like it. Yeah. Um, it's not the point. Point is, <laughs> everybody else is really just using those five nations um, to supplement their own defense so that they don't have to do anything. Yeah. And if they have to start putting in their 2%, then they have to start doing something. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, and even with their 2%, it doesn't affect anything in the end because their 2% is so tiny compared to our 2%. Yeah. yeah. To compared to the countries that actually have militaries. Yeah. Right. That they spend money on to begin with. 
So it only matters because the U.S. said it. And it might matter if the U.K. or France or Germany or maybe Turkey um, said it too, but that that's it. Uh, Like there's... How many members of NATO are there now? 28? I don't even know. 29? Five of them matter. Yeah. (laughs) And so... And the other thing about NATO, like I'm opposed to NATO, NATO's existence at this point, I think it's nothing but trouble. Yeah. But the the other part of that is to remember that NATO was um, was created to counter the Soviet Union and the Warsaw Pact. Yeah. Neither of those things exist anymore. There yeah. is no Soviet Union. There is no Warsaw Pact. And in yeah. fact, half of those satellite states from the Soviet Union are part of NATO now. Are which now is, in NATO, yeah. Which is part of the problem. Yeah. I mean, there's no reason to say... <laughs> I, I don't think that it was reasonable for... God, I can't believe how many times I have to say this. I don't believe that it was reasonable for Putin to invade Ukraine. Yeah. There are other options that could have been taken. Um, I do, however, understand the feeling that you've been backed into a corner. Yeah. Like, I understand how he could feel that way. Yeah. That, okay, they're just not listening to anything I say. The only way that I can get them to listen is to pull the gun. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Because... And and if you're going to pull the gun, you got to pull the trigger. Yeah. I mean, you see that in movies all the time, right? Like, uh, you know, people are talking and nobody listens till somebody pulls a gun out. Yeah. Now, all of a sudden, everybody's listening intently. I mean, we talk about how uh, the only thing that those people in the Middle East, those terrible Shiites in the Middle East understand is violence. But no, that's the only thing we understand. Yeah. Or maybe we think that that's the only thing they understand because that's the only thing we understand. Yeah. Now, I'm opposed to it all all the way around, no matter who's doing it. So I'm opposed to it when Russia invades Ukraine, and I'm opposed to it when U.S. has troops in Syria that they don't want there, and Iraq also. Yeah. Oh, and Saudi Arabia and Yemen and, you know, yeah. all the other places. But there's a there's a point at which you have to say, all right, like, there's, there's a reasonableness to Putin saying that my country's feelings of security matter too. Yeah. Yeah. And you're ignoring our security for the sake of your own. Like, yeah. if we want to have a world where we all get along, we have to respect the the security concerns of other countries, not just the United States and whoever goes along with this. And and that's the other thing, I guess, probably to end on, is that the entire U.S. government's uh, foreign policy design is about eliminating any potential rival to the United States. Yep. uh, Of being the supreme, the superpower. Yeah. The only superpower. Nobody else is allowed to step in. And our entire foreign policy is built around that. And as long as you get in line, you're fine. Yeah. And it doesn't matter whether you're a threat or not if you don't get in line. Yeah. Iran is no threat to the United States. Syria is no threat to the United States. But the problem is that they, they don't... They buck the system. Yeah. They don't tow the line that the United States laid out for them. Yep. Exactly. Um, and there's more to it than that. Obviously, like the real concerns are uh, Russia and China. Yeah. And the reason that the Russia and China are the concerns is because they could potentially actually be something of a rival. Yeah. Not really. I mean, Russia can't really be. Yeah. But they're a historical rival. So there's like, yeah, I, I don't know. There's um, Cold War, War stuff going yeah, on. There, yeah. I mean, so much of our government is still old Cold Warriors. It is warriors. Cold Warriors, yeah. It says um, something about us, our government in general. China could be a real rival. Yeah. And so we're doing everything that we can to keep them down. Why do we care about North Korea? <laughs> we care about North Korea because they're allied with China. Why yeah. do we care about Syria? Because Syria is allied with Iran. Why do yeah. we care about Iran? Because Iran and Russia have good relations. Yeah. That's the only reason. Yeah. They're not a threat in and of themselves, but the, the So remember that when Lindsey Graham and these people come out here start and we got to attack Iran now, like all of the stuff, like that's yeah. that's what's going on here. I- exactly. I mean, our foreign policy is designed to make sure that the real rivals, China is the only one that I would say is a real legitimate rival, but Russia will be included just because yeah. Some serious people, I guess, consider them to be a real rival. Yeah. Um, the idea is to surround them, to 
take down their allies and to isolate them from the system. Yep. Exactly. And that's probably the reason that anybody else actually gets along with us is because they're afraid that we'll, we'll do that to them. Yeah. Not because they're actually friendly with us. Yeah. But, you know, fear only gets you so, so far. far. Yep. Exactly. But that's that's what foreign policy for the U.S. is built around. That Any respect for the U.S. isn't respect, it's fear. Yeah. Yeah. At this that's, point. Yeah. I don't think that that was always true, but I, I think no. it's true now. Oh, it absolutely is true now. So... That's what I have to say about that. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, you got anything you want to add or something else you want to no. you want to just wrap it up? I think I we're think actually like good. right about around 50 minutes, which is where I always wanted the podcast to be, but it never is. It never is. Yeah. We're going to nail it tonight. Yeah. Um, so yeah, let's, let's just wrap it up there. No, we, aren't we supposed to end with something positive? Yeah. Well, I mean, we usually try point, to. But. Some point that we were making about ending with something positive. Yeah. Um, it's always nice. I don't know to. if this is really positive, but the result of all this has been that there are um, there are a lot of countries that are trying to set up a parallel system. Yeah. Outside of U.S. influence. Well, and, and Russia's been a big part of that. Absolutely. Ever since they've been kind of removed from the system. Yeah. Um, and it just goes to show you, if you remove a big piece like that, a big player like that, they will find a way to, to revamp the system so that they're in it. Um, Bricks. And, it, and it makes us weaker by doing that. Mm -hmm. Whether, I mean, it's just what it is. That's just the nature of yeah. things. You we know? can only uh, threaten other countries, economic livelihood for so long. Yeah, exactly. Especially as ours is crumbling. Yeah, we still control the system right now, though. Yeah. But um, it'll it'll take some time for a parallel system to actually be working. Hopefully, we'll have gotten smarter by then. I mean, I used to complain all the time about that the the three countries that were trying to control the world, so to speak. And I don't think that they're really all trying to control the world, but um, U.S., Russia, and China. China was trying to do it economically. Yeah. Russia was trying to do it diplomatically. And the U.S. was trying to do it militarily. Yeah. We picked the worst option. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, and and we could control the world. And and while we're, in a, in a sense, we are trying to control the world economically, it's not through free trade and good agreements and, and benefiting everybody. Yeah. It's by threatening the economic livelihood of everybody else because we control the system. Yep. The System of Exchange. Economic Hitman. Yeah. Oh, what a great book. Yeah. It's a must read for everybody. You can right. get a real insight of how... How we how we operate. Like one of the ways that we operate, yeah. yeah. Um, another good one is the Pentagon's new map. Oh, yeah. I like that one a lot, too. Yeah. Um, and Shock Doctrine, maybe? Yeah. Uh, that's a, you know, that's what we did to Russia... After the fall of the Soviet Union, yeah, um, where we uh, went in, tried to strip them of all their economic resources, where we used the chaos of the fall of the Soviet Union to try and take control of all the resources. Yeah, um, same thing we did in the Middle East too. Yeah. Uh, in anyway, yeah, there's some interesting insight in all of those, um, all those books, and a whole lot more too. But yeah. those are like very non-libertarian. Yeah. Looks at all of this. Yeah. I, I feel like we already recommend plenty of libertarian stuff. So <laughs> yeah, those are some, especially Pentagon's new map is a very not libertarian um, approach to U.S. foreign policy. Yeah. Um, but it's really insightful. It explains a whole lot of choices that are made. Looking mm -hmm. for um, you know near peer rivals because it puts more money into the system. Yeah. Like it was peanuts fighting with uh, Afghanistan and, you know, places like that that didn't have a real state military where you weren't, you know, insurgent fighting is just doesn't require those big ticket items. Yeah. So they were always looking for that near peer rival again. They got it with China and maybe Russia Yeah. as a good excuse to buy big ticket items like aircraft carriers, <laughs> yeah. and, you know, new jet fighters and so on. Got to so have on. the newest technology. Yeah, we're not we're not bombing huts anymore. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> and goat herds. Yeah, exactly. Uh, all right, um, that doesn't seem like a real positive place to end, but that's what <laughs> that's, that's what we got tonight. That's the best I got. <laughs> <laughs> all 
Um, all right, so um, you can follow us on Facebook. You can subscribe on iTunes, YouTube, Podbean. Uh, like and share, comment, subscribe. Um, you can leave criticisms and reviews. And you can always email me at michael at the liberty mike.com. Um, and we'll be back next week when we finally get this right. In the meantime, try to stay free. Life short, live free. Ciao. Later.